All right, guys, it says we are live, so we must be live. I want to welcome everybody to our Thursday night conversations with Commodores. And number 30 is with us, Damian Charlie. Good to see you, my What's friend. What's up? How are you doing? Yes, indeed. I'm How doing good. Program? Doing great. Thanks for having me, man. Well, good. This is my pleasure. You're treating me well. Good. Well, this is going to be a fun, a fun night. We'll have some folks roll in who, who played with you, some of your buddies, I bet, some guys from other teams that maybe you don't know, but we'll, we'll make sure that whenever they roll in, I'll let you know who's here and what they have to say. Oh, that's great. That's good. Well, Sounds as, good. Well, as most of you guys know, I'm located in Birmingham. And what you may or may not know about Mr. Charlie is he is the pride of the Winona Dragons in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> A school yeah, with a rich history. <laughs> oh, you were definitely the pride of Winona, but it has a rich sports history. A lot of folks have come through your school and made it to the next levels and into the pros over the, the many years. So let's, I mean, let's start there. Let's start with growing up in Birmingham. Tell us, share with us, what was it like in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s growing up as a kid? In Birmingham? Uh, I mean, a lot of fun. It's kind of like if you grow up in the state of Alabama, uh, football is truly king, bottom line. You know, with Bama winning their, what is it, 17th national championship. So, so I, you know, I think it's like their 48th in, or 49th. Who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? They, they, all I know to everybody, they, they got the most out of everybody just about. Yeah. But, but, you know, growing up in Alabama, uh, just a rivalry between Alabama and Auburn, mm -hmm. um, you know, literally, I think Alabama is considered was like our pro sports team growing up. So every kid grows up wanting to be, you know, play for the Crimson Tide or, or Auburn Tigers. So anyway, I'm just saying that football was just had a big influence in the, the, the culture in the state and yeah. still does to this day. And so, you know, I started playing football in first grade, tackle football, um, actually over in uh, community Hueytown. And in case people don't know, that's the, the, the high school that Jameis Winston ended up coming from and going to Florida State when the Heisman and all that. And so, um, so was kind of said, grew up playing football over there. And then by my middle school years, uh, my parents switched me from going to Hueytown over to uh, Winona, uh, well, the Birmingham City Schools, because my mom, she was the band directress of, uh, of the Winona at, at Winona. And so I went to Jones Valley for a year in eighth grade and then came on up to the high school and, uh, and was very grateful that we had, uh, I mean, I guess I can say I had a really great mentor or guy that, that I admired that was uh, my eighth grade year was his senior year, but Sam Shade, uh, he uh, went on to play for the University of Alabama and uh, was a strong safety in, uh, in Alabama. His sophomore year, that's when they won the national championship in 92 uh, with Gene Stallings. You, you were probably a freshman or sophomore that year in high school, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I was. And it just so happened, you know, how, how things always happen, Sam performing really, really well. Uh, and by that time, our coach, uh, Coach Ronald Cheatham, just recently passed, uh, bless his soul, but uh, he really began to um, help the guys that was at Winona believe into his program. And, and we really, I would say, hit our stride by my sophomore, junior year where, you know, Sam performing well. And so if, if a guy's doing well on the football field, they're going to like, what school does he go to? And so, you know, so they come over to see what, what we know has. And, and yeah, some really, really great athletes um, I was able to play with and, uh, and, and come through. So I was fortunate that I think uh, Vanderbilt, they got in early coming after me and uh, recruited me. Uh, I was being recruited by Jerry Gennardo. Mm -hmm. um, coach Ron Case there was a defensive back coach and so they always had their eye on me switching even though I played both sides I played receiver and, and running back but also defensive back they all they really wanted me to come up and and, and possibly play corner and so even though Coach Donato recruited me 
he left and went to LSU. Vandy brought in uh, Coach Rod Dauhauer and, and the whole NFL crew. Coach Woody was was a part of that that coaching staff. You know, so signed with Vandy in '95 and and uh, played for Coach Dauhauer from '95 through my sophomore year, and then until Coach Woody became head coach. Sure. Sure. Well, growing up and in, in, in ultimately going to Winona, did you play multiple sports or was football your first and only love when it came to sports? Uh, football was my first and only love outside of running track to, mm -hmm. to be, get in shape for football. Uh, funny story is, is that uh, when I switched from going to, to, to Hueytown, I was in the Jefferson County schools mm -hmm. to come over to uh, – to the inner city schools, uh, I actually took a break from playing football. And so I decided to get in the band and, mm -hmm. and play the trumpet. And so I was just going to do it for a year and start playing football again uh, over at, at Hueytown at the junior high. Um, but that's when I switched over to eighth grade and Jones Valley, they didn't have a middle school football team. So I had to be in the band again. And then by the time I went into ninth grade, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to be sitting on the bench. I was like, man, I ain't no ninth grade playing. And, and, and so and even my mom convinced me, like, well, maybe why don't you sit out one more year to kind of work out and, and maybe get some weight on because you're going to be getting out there with, you know, you're only 14, going to be out there with guys 18 looking like grown men. So, uh, so I took a three-year hiatus uh, playing, playing the trumpet, being in the marching band, which actually was, was a lot of fun. Uh, I was going to say, this, were you, how many years were you part of your mother's uh, band? under her direction. I mean, and honestly, all the way through high school, I was in the marching band, mm -hmm. ninth, ninth grade. Well, eighth grade, I got to march a little bit, even though I'm in, in middle school, but then ninth grade. Uh, but even in 10th grade, even though I wasn't in the marching band, I still played in the concert band. So I, I played my trumpet all the way. Almost, I, I, I think I took a break my senior year. I didn't do it anymore. Just totally focused on, on football. But but it was fun being in van. I mean, we That's went to cool. all the the HBCU classics, uh, uh -huh. FAMU down going making a trip down to Tallahassee when FAMU would play Southern in their homecoming, the Alabama State wow. playing Alabama A and M in the Magic City Classic. Mm -hmm. um, even went down to to uh, to to Mardi Gras. I mean, it was it was it was a lot of fun. My mom did a really great job building that band program. Oh, I got I got so many questions from here that we could go. Uh, I'll start with this. At some point during your high school uh, time period, did somebody or anybody recognize you from football while you were in the band? Not your high school classmates. I mean, somebody in the community. Are you really, are you the same guy? Well, like I said, the funny thing is like all my, my, uh, Little League football was over in Hueytown and mm -hmm. my name was big over there, DC Charlie and, and, yeah. and, and all that. And so when I when I came over to, to the Birmingham City Schools, I mean, nobody really knew who I was. And so to first come over there and the first thing that I'm doing is being in the band, you know, so all the kids over there is just like, who's this, this band kid? So even when I came out for football, my, you know, say the 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 spring of my my freshman year going into to 10th grade man i they gave that i was the butt of all jokes like who are these band boys coming out here to play mm -hmm. play football and i mean they were they were giving it to me which i i would say probably gave me some edge to to really mm -hmm. i had to really prove myself oh. um so, so it was it was a good thing I was going to say, it probably didn't take him very long to realize you had some athleticism. We better take <laughs> this dude pretty seriously out here. Yeah, because what ended up happening was by my, my by the fall, 10th grade year, I was actually starting at receiver. That was the first way I was able to get on the field. Um, mm -hmm. Even with, you know, you, you have upperclassmen as starting running right. back and, and upperclassmen at quarterback. So, you know, you got to really – find a way to be on the field and and so by my sophomore year I was like one of the it was probably like three only about three sophomores three or four mm -hmm. sophomores that actually started I got a lot of playing time and, and I was one of the guys uh now did you perform at halftime in your football uniform oh nah, no that that, <laughs> that I, I, I was done doing doing marching band by, I by 10th grade and all that so I, I, I didn't do it in the marching band it was just I concert will, band i got one more question along this line we'll move on to something else how are your chops now are you allowed to play in the house 
Uh, nah, even, even though my, my, my boys, uh, uh, they, I wouldn't say they picked it up, but they, they attend Battleground Academy. And so Jordan, he's, he plays the trumpet and, uh, and Jonathan, he plays a saxophone. Um, they don't, they, they did it more so in their, their middle school years, but, but yeah, I, I, I would pick up Jordan's trumpet every now and then to kind of, kind of blow it to see if I still had it. Which oh, I don't, I'm, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. But guys, I'm talking with Damian and Charlie. We got Flavius Smith, Jim Aguiano, Taylor Unzicker. We got Tyler Unzicker. Damn, sorry. Tyler. We got What's up, Tyler boys. Uh, well, let's let's talk about let's get off a of band for a little bit. And let's talk about playing ball. At what point in high school did you? come to the realization, hey, I, I want to play on the next level, and I think I've got what it takes to play in college. Talk, talk about that development. Um, I would say right after my, my 10th grade year, you know, like I said, uh, the, the crescendo of, you know, we look at Alabama, and you got upperclassmen who are starting to get recruited and stuff, and, you know, when they won the national championship, you know, overall beating out, beating Miami the way that they did, Sam had a phenomenal game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, he literally inspired our entire team because he's like, he's one of us. You know, if if he can make it, then what what can we do if we put the work in? And mm -hmm. and we're very grateful for Coach Cheatham because he was, he was just like, look, guys, even though we won't have, say, the most updated equipment or fields or anything like that, you know, you put the time in, you put the effort in, you know, things going to work out in your favor. And so I would say it started probably right around that time um, of, of really pursuing that possible dream of like, man, we're, we can be good enough to at least somebody's going to pay, will, will help us get to college and, and pay for our college. You know, it, it wasn't necessarily like, oh, I want to go to Miami and all these different places. It's, you know, it starts off with like, hey, I feel I'm good enough to get a scholarship to play football somewhere. And uh, and so, yeah, it just began to build upon itself. I mean, especially with when some of the SEC schools start coming to look at your spring practices and, and uh, coming to your games because they're recruiting some of the upperclassmen, uh, you know, guys that that were big names in, in, in our on our team from Leotis Williams to C. Hendricks. I mean, we had some some big guys that are really big offensive linemen that they were coming to look at. So so, you know, the drill It's like if you perform while they're out there looking at somebody else, you know, you're going to catch yeah, their eye. See. Yeah, they're going to see what. And what was your coach? Now, I, I grew up in Dothan, South Alabama, but my and I'm a few years older than you, but my coach's philosophy, right or wrong, good or bad, he was old school. He did not let the coaches talk to the players until they were a senior. Now, that would never fly today, of course, but he would hold all the recruiting letters. He, I mean, he was, he wanted you focused on your game and not get what he called the big head. Mm -hmm. when, when were, what was your coach's approach to that? When were you allowed to start talking to coaches? When did they start coming and talking with you and getting the letters and all that good stuff? Coach Cheetah was straightforward. I mean, he, he, he was uh, let me know. It's like, look, Damien, these schools are starting to look at you. And, and so I didn't play defensive back until my, my senior year. I was playing receiver and running back. Um, and he's like, but I think to get you some more looks and, and have them feel that they can move you around, it'd be good for you to play cornerback your senior year um which i did and end up leading the team in interceptions um but you know uh being able to fill out the 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 um kind of like a little little uh slip to let the schools know that you're eligible and that they can send information to you he was he was a big proponent of of encouraging us to do that and um um but definitely during the season when coaches came to the school to to speak with him um it wasn't like they were taking bringing us out of the class to, to talk right. to coaches and all that uh he just you know we just had really good conversations um about the thought of where i want to go and, and who's interested and who, who's looking at me and and so you know i can be honest vandy came came approaching me from the jump like my 11th grade year like i would say seriously recruiting me and, and looking at me because it's like look you match 
uh, the type of caliber kid that that we want. You know, you're doing well, exceptionally well in school, uh, but then you're performing on the field, um, and we take it that you you have bigger dreams than just trying to make it to the to the league. And so, even though my heart was like, you know, we all want to be recruited by the Auburn, the Alabama, and, and want that want them to be in the mix. You know, the realities were it's kind of like if I'm second tier on their their list, like if they don't get this guy that they're wanting, then they're going to come after me. You know, you begin to kind of, so I kind of like, well, look, I want somebody who wants me as their first choice, you know, and and, and that's how, how Vandy was with me through the entire recruiting process. They were, they, they were just straightforward and, um, and earnest about it. And, and I felt, you know, Alabama or Auburn, they were kind of giving me breadcrumbs or, or had that little carrot on the stick. I was like, yeah. no, nah, I'm, I'm going to go with the sure thing. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What other schools were interested in you at the time? Uh, Alabama, Auburn, uh, Southern Miss, because actually my, my uh, coach Cheatham, he, he played at Southern Miss. Actually, he still holds <laughs> a ton of records down there. Uh, uh, Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, Alabama State, Alabama a and Tuskegee. Uh, I would say those were the main ones that were uh, kind of coming after me. And did it did it matter to you about staying in state versus going to a school in another state? Was that a, a big factor for you? Um, I mean, a little bit. Like I said, you know, that factor of that, you know, initial dream or desire that I wanted to play at Alabama, Auburn, um, you know, it came, went down there on a couple of unofficial visits, even uh, one official visit to, to Auburn. Um, uh, but yeah, it was kind of like just the overall, you know, I say the process because I came up to, to Vandy on an unofficial visit and it just so happened that same unofficial visit where we got to tour the campus, the facilities and all that. Uh, I actually toured with uh, Jamie Watkins, who was, he ended up being a free safety. Um, we came in the same class. Mm-hmm. And so we actually walked around the campus, toured the campus together at the same time and, and all that. And, you, and I just remember getting a sense of feel of like, you know, when you begin to have a dream for your life that's bigger than just football, um, mm-hmm. I would say walking around Vandy kind of expanded my perspective about life. And, and I, I would say the ultimate dream that I started out with of, of football opening a door for me to walk through in order to mm-hmm. allow me um, more options in life. And, and I remember just getting that sense when I walked around the campus, touring the campus, it was a beautiful campus. And, and, and just in a lot of ways, I would say, fell in love with that aspect isn't it isn't it amazing how that just kind of comes into focus when you're walking mm-hmm. around that campus and you're thinking about your future it's yeah it really is a remarkable time did you have any unofficial or official hosts when you came up for that visit you remember uh, that not not like for my unofficial visit it was just you know the coaches and I think was it Eric Johnson that that walked us around. I think it was EJ that that okay. that did some of that. But for my official visit, uh, Corey Chavis and well Eric Vance mm-hmm. and uh, Corey Chavis they were they were like uh, they were my hosts. And, uh, Let, let's was, bookmark Corey Chavis for a few minutes. <laughs> we'll come back to him in a minute. But you came in at a unique. Turbulent, if that's the right word, time because you're getting recruited by Donardo's staff. Yep. By the time you get there, he's gone. Yep. Yep. Because as as well. Go ahead. ahead. You kind of broke up. All I was going to say is take us through that mindset. I do realize when when you're getting recruited by a certain coach or a certain. Uh, staff and they may have a philosophy how they want to utilize you as an athlete on the field and all of that but then that all pretty much goes away when the new staff comes in right in the middle of your recruitment so take us through your thoughts and how it is you ended up still instead of following Donardo you stayed with your commitment well it's it's wild because I got recruited my official visit 
to Vandy was in December. It was kind of like the first week or the second week that you could start doing official visits. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I went, they brought me up there. I was one of the, I guess, first crew guys that they brought in. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down with Coach Donardo with my parents. And that, I don't think I remember hearing any buzz that he may leave or anything, but you know, mm -hmm. it was just the, the regular spiel. Like, look, Coach mm -hmm. Case, you know, he's recruited you since your junior year. We want you here. You know, um, team had just had a, a, you know, pretty decent season. Had beat Georgia down at Georgia and, and the whole deal. So mm -hmm. there was already affinity of being connected to Vandy and that coaching staff, of course. And then when he left to LSU, you know, you kind of left wondering, like, what's going on? And uh, Brad Bates um, and Ricky George, uh, mm -hmm. they, were, they were all on it. I remember getting a call from them. I think the day of or the next day uh, after uh, he left and they just was saying, hey, we want to confirm that that we still want you. You're still the caliber student, that athlete that we want and we want you to be here. And I remember saying, well, yeah, I, I still desire to be there. And I think within a, a week, um, they came they came down together to meet with with me and my family in our home uh, I think just before they even had they uh confirmed that they had a higher coach uh Dauhauer, uh mm -hmm. just a one another one of those like we want you type type of deal so so it was it was good it was encouraging from the standpoint of no need to pull pull back and try to look at some someplace else uh because Vandy they still wanted me well that's Boy, that was so clutch for them to be able to do that. A couple of things about that. Uh, how did you learn that Donardo was no longer going to be at Vanderbilt? Uh, found it in the news. You know, it was kind of like it became, um, mm -hmm. I don't want to say national news or whatever, but it was like, you know, LSU hires Vanderbilt's head coach, uh, Jerry yeah. Donardo. You know, it's like, oh, snaps. What is that? that you know, that really uh, predated all this social media. And you know, I still think. I don't think it's a rare day when an outgoing coach lets the current team know I ain't going to be here tomorrow. So I, I, I get that. But the other side note, I wanted to tell you, Coach Bates was the strength and conditioning coach my years. And oh, really? he was there almost 20 years, but he's going to come on this show in February. And I'm so excited to have him. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, there's some stories. I'll tell you one real quick. I mean, we did, he, and he may have done this during your time too. They used to create these competitions. He'd divide up the team in the off season and we'd have weightlifting competitions. I played quarterback. I hated lifting weights, still do. <laughs> but you know, you got to pull your part. Well, part of one of the competitions, it was snowing. We had to go over to the, uh, uh, the, stadium. Park, the parking deck. Oh, really? The parking deck next to the stadium and had to have timed competitions pushing a sedan that was in neutral all the way up to the top of the deck. There was four guys per team. Now, we had one of the trainers, one of the equipment guys in the car, and every once in a while, he'd throw the parking brake on. Oh, so that man. Was, that was their idea of fun from Coach Bates. But anyway, let's get back to you now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so who'd you end up rooming with your freshman year, or did you have a roommate? Yeah, I ended up uh, rooming with uh, Jason Smith. Uh, Jason is a uh, Birmingham Huffman came out of Birmingham Huffman High School. You're right, yeah. and so yeah. so really cool story. Uh, just uh, Jason's Jason's father, uh, Willie Smith. God rest his soul. Love that man. It's like a second father. Mm -hmm. But over the summer, Jason and I and his dad, he would actually drive us up on the weekends, like on a Saturday, to actually work out with uh, with Chris Gaines. And so like early on. Wow. Starting to help us get acclimated to yeah. what the workouts was going to be and, and, and all that. And, uh, and we have a, have a blast. So, so, uh, our family was really close. And, and so Jason, uh, called him hustle man. Um, <laughs> he, he and I were roommates, uh, our freshman year. Well, he, Jason has been on my show and I've gotten to know Jason a bunch this past year. And, and I know that he's, he's gotten his transplant and is, yeah. is hopefully doing well. He keeps us updated. So we certainly wish him much love and, and lots of luck getting, getting healthier and healthier. But speaking of Chris Gaines, 
scout team quarterback freshman year, sophomore year. Chris Gaines obviously is the middle linebacker on the number one. <laughs> that was not a lot of fun. That was my introduction to SEC football. Yes, the, other thing, the other thing about Chris, two, two other quick stories, and I really hope I'll get him on the show sometime. Uh, I was there and I think it was 87 at Tulane when he had 37 tackles in one game. Oh my gosh. And Chris was a beast. 37 tackles in one game. Mark Stump Johnson from Tarrant High School returned to kickoff that yeah, game. Yeah, Stump, yeah. Yep. But the <laughs> other thing, I also saw Chris Gaines in the Blue Gray game in Montgomery, Christmas Day, his, his last year. His last year. School. He was named defensive MVP. And I put the pictures, I think, in our group. I took some pictures as Chris is holding up the big trophy uh, where he was named MVP. And the entire trophy was like three feet tall. The whole thing fell apart in his hands. It was poorly made. <laughs> you know, he's just so unbelievably strong. But the look on his uh, face was like, oh, my gosh. But anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, going up with Chris, that must have been a real a real introduction to SEC, you know, weight rooms and all of that stuff. And hang out with some of the guys that summer, too. Yes, indeed. I, I would say Chris it was a prototypical uh, strength and conditioning coach you would expect or you thought you were going to get coming coming into to, to Vanderbilt. And so, so yeah, the, the sprints and stuff that, that Jason and I would do, I mean, I, I just remember coming up and after after we'd be done, we were white heading back home. I mean, knocked oh, out the sure. entire time. I am sure. I like, now, for folks who don't know, we got you got to share, how'd you get the nickname Popcorn? Oh, that's, that, that moniker came from Chris Gaines himself. Uh, you know, by the time summer rolled around and, uh, and you know, the team, we're together, starting to do workouts during the summer and having to always weigh in because, you know, they're monitoring our weight and how we're getting stronger and all that. And um, and so so for me, it's kind of like I, I could say I gain muscle or my, my muscles really pop when I, when I, I lift. And so... Uh, so yeah, so I'm starting to get stronger, and at at the time, coming from high school, I was just 165, and I think they were wanting me to get up to 175 as my playing weight, and uh, and so I was still hanging around 168, you know, I hadn't busted in 170 yet, and uh, I remember getting on the on the scale, and Chris had his clipboard, and he's looking at the numbers. He was like, he says, I tell you, he was like. You are just like a, a little bag of Jiffy Pop popcorn. I was like, he said, you know what? He's all fluffy, all big and fluffy, but so still light in the butt. And he had pet me on it. He said, you know what? That's what I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you Jiffy Pop. And I was like, oh, no, don't do that. He said, nope, that's it. Jiffy Pop, 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 pop. And, and so because I was so aggravated and, and he could see the dislike on it, you know, that's all it, it takes for, for something to stick. And so, uh, so yeah, it, it became, you know, instead of Jiffy Pop, people started just saying on the team, call me popcorn. So we'd be around the campus and, uh, <laughs> and I think uh, Johnny, uh, one of the guys in my class, he, he was really good at when we were walking across the yard, he'd be like, popcorn, you know? And so it, it, it became one of those nicknames where, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks around the school oh, that's awesome. start calling me popcorn. That's so. awesome. It's and, you know, and you know, for it, Chris was such a nice guy, and just for as big and as built as he was, he didn't have the type of voice to me that matched who he, you know, his physical build. It was yeah. a lot. It was very southern, of course. <laughs> that southern draw, yeah. Yeah, very light. Well, that's what you get when you're from Old Hickory. That's right. That is true. That is very true. Very well, true. It, it is stuck. So, so every every now and then, I I like uh our somebody at my church, they'll come up to me and be like, hey, what's up, Popcorn? And I mean, I was like, all right, what what former teammate have you run into that, right. that you had a conversation with that, you know, right. let you know well, that? It, hey, don't don't forget, don't you have sons at BGA or went to BGA? And I know there's all kinds of connections uh, <laughs> yeah. there. But guys, I'm talking with Damian Charlie, of course. And we got oh, OJ Fleming has joined us. He says, what's up? The and, juice. And, and one of my faves, Billy Smith. Billy was a uh, former uh, Metro police officer who was one of the beloved Keystone cops for so many years. Those, guys took, those guys took the equipment, any all the out-of-town games. They were just so yeah. awesome. Billy, Billy has been on our show and, and has shared a whole bunch of great stories from the past. So yeah, thank you so guys cool. for stopping by. Um, Damon, I want to move on to the field. I want to talk about 
your transition from being a, a big dog in, in high school and now you're, you know, you're trying to be that big dog again in the SEC, but it's the number one conference, the toughest players. Yeah. What was it about the game that, that kind of came at you in a hurry and said, I know where I am now. I got to adjust my game. I got to, you know, whatever it is, it's not high school anymore. Well, you know, coming in, I, and I remember over the summer doing workouts on campus and, and everything and, and all the upperclassmen, you know, they were talking and, and hoping and praying that that we didn't have to go to bell buckle because that's, you know, <laughs> that was might as well have been a cuss word, you know, yeah. all the stories I heard about, about bell buckle. Um, but I guess due to uh, having a, a contract with them that we had to go. So, you know, our fall camp was held at, at, at bell buckle. And, uh, and it was just, you know, it's just night and day football. <laughs> and, and I ain't gonna lie, just the environment itself, uh, trying to, you know, trying to get acclimated to a new surrounding, trying to learn, you know, the, this is a new coaching staff. So, so they're trying to input all their stuff and, and get the guys that are going to be on the field playing, trying to see if any of the young guys could possibly play. And so, you know, you're still trying to, figure it out and find your place. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it was just hard. I, I, I feel I had a, a really bad camp. You know, I, I, I was just feeling like I'm just lost. It's like, I can't keep up. Everything's going so fast and uh, you know, I, not really going to coach coach fuel to, to be able to talk to him about trying to learn some things, even though I, I could say that I remember one night uh, after practice, after a film session, Corey, he had said, hey, any of you guys, young guys want to stay and watch some film? And so I remember staying and, and, and began to look at it. And that, I remember being with Corey that, that night. I said, that guy, I know this guy's going to the league. <laughs> you know, you begin to understand because Corey, I think he ended up being, uh, I think, freshman all SEC the year before. Um, and um, he, just had, he just had that knowledge of, of the game that, um, that you just saw. And, uh, and, and he was just, just really good, like trying to teach us up, coach us up. And, uh, but uh, I was very thankful that when we got back on the campus and, you know, kind of began to get into just the normal everyday of life of how that routine was going to play out, living in the dorms, going to practice. Um, and so I, I always said that Bell Buckle nearly destroyed my love for the game of football, but coming back on campus, it, it returned and, and then I just began to figure out that, you know, hey, let me hustle, whatever I can do to help the team win um, and get on the field. And I began to just, you know, just my speed around the corner with special teams, especially like rushing off the end, try to block punts or, 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 or whatever. That, that was something that, that coach caught the coach's eyes. And, and, you know, my freshman year, I was able to, to practically play on all the special teams just about punt, punt return, kickoff, kickoff return. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's how I, I was able to break onto the field. Well, we, my years were with Coach Watson Brown, the late eighties. We never had the pleasure. And I say that term obviously loosely uh, of going to bell buckle, but to a man who has talked on this show, whether it was standing water or not, you know, showering for a couple of days, whatever it was, it was as much mental testing mm -hmm. on your, you know, between your ears as it was the physical part of it. Did yeah. Did you find it to be that as well? Oh, hands down. I mean, because it is like, I think I, I had, had mentioned, you know, I, I seen that movie, uh, the junction boys, you know, the, the, the story about, uh, Paul Bear Bryant when he coached Texas A&M and it was literally like, a, a battle of the wills, like, you know, only the strong will, will ultimately survive. And so being at bell buckle, it, it was, I mean, you're away from everything, you know, the gym, you know, you come into Vanderbilt looking at the, the nice locker room that you plan on. Oh, this is going to be my locker with my name plate. And then at bell buckle, you know, your, your pads, you're in this wooden old gym that doesn't have any air conditioning. They have a fan that's blowing you know, your, your pads never got dry. I mean, they were, they were always wet. I mean, even at the end, end of the last, you know, practice that evening, you wake up the next morning to go out and you're putting on wet shoulder pads. It was just, uh, I mean, it, it was, it was just kind of like, 
I hate this. <laughs> now, now, I got to ask as a side story, how many times have you told your sons about Bell Buckle and do they now roll their eyes? Dad, we know that story. No, nah, you know, I, I've never told them about it. You really? know, I, I, the only I've, I've mentioned it because, you know, uh, I have a daughter that that uh, that at, that's at UTC. She's running in track there. Um, but, you know, going to to UTC or in Atlanta where, where my wife's family is, you know, on 24, you you are past the, the exit for Bell Buckle right outside of Murfreesboro. And you still stutter. I, I, I do. I do. I actually, you know, I was like, man, there's Bell Buckle. I was like, you know, I just keep on moving. I was like, drop oh. past that exit with the quickness. Well, I hope that they I hope they see our discussion tonight and, and that sparks a little conversation. Maybe they'll have even more appreciation for dad and what what he went back <laughs> went through back in the day. Oh gosh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> well take us, take us, let's get out of bubble buckle, let's come back to campus, let's get into your freshman year. I dare say at Winona, you didn't play in front of SEC sized crowds. You might have played in front of a few thousand, maybe 10,000 best days, depending on how far y'all went into the playoffs. But it's different when you're running into Sanford Stadium or mm -hmm. Ryan Denny or wherever. Yeah. Do you remember being focused and not seeing how big the crowd was or were you just wide eyed, holy smokes, where am I today? I think that moment happened to me uh, early on. It was my freshman year um, because I was, I was actually the backup kick returner. Uh, so, but I played, you know, like I said, punt return and and like trying to punt block and uh, and, and some other things. And so, it just so happened our freshman year, and this is when Ken Winslow, he was actually the the uh, uh, special teams coach. Uh, I remember uh, Coach Dow Howard putting it out there. It's like, look. Anytime somebody turn over the ball, you're coming out. You may lose your position if you turn the ball over. We can't turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we, just, we had the privilege of going up to Notre Dame with touchdown Jesus and back when, you know, you know just the, 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 the lure of, of Notre Dame. And, uh, and they got out early on us. Uh, I think they got a 14 zip pretty I quickly. Was, and, and I was at and, that game. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and so – uh, came out of TV timeout, and I remember just being in the stadium like, man, this is what Rudy and the whole deal and, and all that. And they kicked the ball off, and they kicked it to Corey uh, Chavis. And so Corey caught it and tried to run. I think he kind of got tied up a little bit and tried to make a spin, and like, boom, somebody hit him, and he fumbled it, and they picked it up and ran it in for a score off the the, the, the kickoff return. Yep. And so, so I remember uh, Coach Wiz, just, you know, us being the, the play, and he had this this look on his face like, man, he was, and he came looking down the sideline. I was like, maybe it's my opportunity. So I remember kind of stepping out a little bit just to kind of see if he, and then he was just like, popcorn, come down here. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, even, even the coaches <laughs> talking popcorn. Yep. yep. And so, uh, so yeah, I literally, you know, took, took Corey's spot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I remember him saying, he's like, look, they going to probably kick it right back to you, back to that spot, mm -hmm. you know, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, so I remember going out and it was still the, the TV timeout. And for that quick moment, you know, looking around and looking at the stadium and, and, and all that. And, uh, and sure enough, they kicked the ball off. And actually the, the picture that you shared on, on, on Facebook mm -hmm. post about me, the, the, the picture, uh, with me with the white jersey running with the football. That was actually the, the return that I, that I had. Well, and I, remember, I got a question for you. Go ahead. At what point, when that ball's being kicked, it's in the air, did you go from being wide-eyed, I can't believe I'm here, to the athletic instinct kick back in? And I got to Yeah, I mean, it was – I got to say it was really surreal. And when I say surreal, like like – when they talk about time standing still and everything mm -hmm. slowing down, uh, I think it's probably some of that adrenaline rush that's going on and, and that keen focus of, mm -hmm. of what am I going to do? I'm not scared anymore. I just, you know, it's just the football instincts kick in, you know, catch the ball, secure it, you know, kind of look for your, your lane that you could, could cut through and, and, and try to, try to get, get something. And, uh, 
and yeah, I ended up, I think, having like a either 30 or 40 yard return on that. And um, and that kind of, I won't say solidified me, but I, from that point on, I began to be, you know, the kick returner um, well, for us throughout that year. What you don't know is we had about nine or 10 from my class all met because a lot of those guys are from the Chicago area. We all came mm -hmm. to the game. And for the games that I used to go to, I used to always look at the, the Vanderbilt roster and see who was from Alabama. And that's who I kept my eyes on. Mm -hmm. So watching you do that, I was like, all right, Bama. <laughs> all right. And speaking of in the house, I want to welcome Jim Arnold and Alfonso Harvey, who have stopped by. Ah, there you go. Good to see you guys. Hey, Thank you. Alfonso, what's up? <laughs> Both of those guys have been yeah. on our yeah. show. Thanks for talking to Damien and Charlie, of course. He's at Notre Dame. He just returned a nice kickoff return for some of his first game action or, or early action his freshman year. And let, let's stay on the field and just give me just any thoughts, any memories that you've got about any of your time, Damien, uh, either on the field or practices in the clubhouse, just some good memories that, uh, that bring a smile to your face. You know, I mean, I think always the, the, the best memories are going to be when you're with your teammates in the locker room and even some of the times that you're spending outside of the locker room, whether at, at you know, one of the, the upperclassmen apartments or houses that, that they were renting. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a, a, a great brotherhood, you know, that, that really continues to, to, to stir in my heart. I, I oftentimes think my freshman year, uh, Kenny Simon was just a, a – he was so hilarious. Some of the the songs and raps that 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 he had come up just just with just making fun of of uh of I think actually Coach Dow Hauer. I mean, it 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 was kind of like we were like the bad news bears. It's like some of these upperclassmen guys, like Kenny Simon, mm -hmm. uh, was one of the better players that should have been on the field, but yet you could see the politics or different things going on that that hey coach wants to put this guy on the field and since you're a senior you're going to be graduating soon so let me start trying to get the younger guys in um and so so starting to see even how the upper class some different upper class been handled just the the adversity that goes along with that you know it it, it began you begin to learn a lot more um about life even just through that lens like right. like man here's a guy that should be on the field playing but he's not but yet, you know, he's still encouraging guys, coaching guys up, still having fun, being, being a, you know, a, a great, great presence in the locker room compared to maybe a guy that, that's bitter and kind of like, oh, uh, you know, coach, you know, ain't fair and all that. And so, um, so yeah, I, I, through it all, you, you begin to learn a lot just about life and then also about your role, you know, you know, all of us have dreams of, of you wanting to come to a, a team and, and impact it in such a way to be started on the field and feel that you've earned it. Um, but if 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 that's not the case and that doesn't happen the way that you plan it, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to, you know, bail on it? Or are you going to be what you sh truly should be, a team player and kind of like support, encourage, and still go out there and compete and give, give it your all? Uh, and, and so that's, I think that's, some of the memories that 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 come to mind over uh, over an overall picture. Um, what's some other things? I think uh, I, I, I got to admit the uh, uh, the fun thing that that happens. We called it the sideline posse. So several of us that was in the defensive backfield: uh, me, Dominic Coger, uh, Jeremy Banks, uh, Johnny Matoya. Um, you know, we would. I, I sometimes was was on the scrub defense where, you know, second team defense that we're having to give the looks for the yeah. first team offense and, and all that. And, uh, and so we came up with this, the little moniker sideline posse in the sense that like, we're going to be on the sideline, but we're going to have fun. We're going to ball out when we, we go against the, the, the first team guys. And, uh, and so just that little camaraderie and that fun. And, and so, so I remember sometimes when I would get called up to kind of, play nickel or dime with the first team defense and have to leave the sideline posse if I came back down there like man you ain't with us no more gone gone and so <laughs> so it's, it's it's memories like that with with uh with with just like I said my teammates of of making the entire experience uh at Vandy just memorable and uh very fun what what a great attitude what great memories 
Yeah. Talk, talk about the transition academically from Winona to Vanderbilt. How, how did that go for you? Now that that was that was hard, hands down. You know, uh, I I consider myself a, a, a smart guy. It's kind of like I worked hard, but then you know how high school can be. You can can just put a certain amount of effort forward and, and you get your A's or B's and and um, and so coming from Winona, uh, I think my teachers did the best they could to prepare me. Um, but I, my desire was to go into engineering just due to the love of math and science. And uh, I had a, a cousin who was an electrical engineer for Exxon that, you know, talking to him. And I, I went to a lot of different engineering programs uh, throughout high school over the summer. So that's where I had my focus of that's what I wanted to accomplish coming to Vanderbilt and was assured that that the you know, the athletic team, you know, the football, hey, hey, we want to support that and encourage that. And we're not going to try to make you take some basket weaving class, or anything mm -hmm. like that. And so we're going to support you and have the tutors. And so I remember coming in and, and being overwhelmed by the work um, and, and having to spend some mad hours studying and, and having tutors almost feel like my dog gone and I don't know if I can I can do this I can make that you know it I'd say it would be devastating where I go in say I studied for a physics test and you know put the time in think I have the concepts right and I come out feeling like man I think I made a, a probably a b or a minus on the test and come back and it was like a d and I was like ah you know just feeling like the world is crumbling around me because I, you know, I consider myself a, a good student. And so when those grades weren't always matching up and always having to, you know, continue to persevere and work to try to gain the concepts and, and, and feel like, you know, not saying I'm having a makeup for the, the learning gap that I didn't have. Uh, that also was one of the, the defining points and in, in, in moments in my life um, that, you know, I stuck with engineering I changed from the focus of I thought I wanted to go into mechanical engineering to to stick with engineering science slash industrial engineering um what I graduated with uh but yeah it was it was a a roller coaster ride uh to say the least from doing you know it taught you a lot too about your own abilities and yeah. and what you could accomplish whether it's on the field and maybe maybe you didn't you weren't able to recognize a certain route as as quickly as you should have and you kept at it maybe yeah. you didn't understand certain uh, physics concepts but you kept at it and ultimately you got that degree ultimately you got to play four years and it just to me it's such that time period 18 to 22 is such a a learning time yeah. period for all of us maturity on and off the field in real life and with oh, our, hands our down. Buddies. but i cannot let you get out of here without talking about your senior year and playing that orange team from knoxville we gotta <laughs> talk about that. oh gosh well, Why was yeah. that a significant game in year well i mean my, my senior year it, it goes by like really really quickly but my mm -hmm. my senior year and we played ut uh at at Vandy and, uh, and they came in, of course, the perennial favorite because they, they're chasing the national championship, which they, they eventually end up winning um, behind T Martin and everything. Um, but, you know, I, I remember it, with that being my last game, I knew that that's gonna be my last time, you know, strapping on the, the black and gold. And, and, you know, I didn't have, wasn't trying to go to the league or anything uh, like that, but just remembering, um, I guess if I think back of that game, I just remember my, my oldest brother, Mark, he was, he actually flew in for that game and, and he had a, a huge impact on me. Uh, he's the reason why I started playing football in all honesty. So, um, and so he, he's coached me through the years and, and, and helped. And so the one thing that, that we did throughout that game was just kind of like a countdown in the sense of, you know, it's the last go at it, baby boy, you know, give it your all, don't have any regrets, you know, um, you know, give it your all so that when you walk off the field, you don't have any regrets, no matter what the score is and, and, and all that. So, um, so yeah, I, I remember just, like I said, striving to have fun. Uh, I thought I was going to break a punt uh, close for a touchdown. And I ended up getting tripped up at the last minute when I broke through that first, first wave. And I was like, ah, but, uh, but yeah, it's, I just, like I said, I just remember 
that as as the last game. Now, was your senior year, was that T. Martin or was that Peyton Manning your senior year? My senior year was, was T. Martin. My, my but your junior, junior year, year. Junior year was, was when, we, when we scared the bejesus out of them. At, Let's at, talk about at that at over now at that, Stadium. Now that, now, that was fun. That was yeah. a lot of fun. You know, I remember going, going in, us going into that game. Um, you know, all the hype that surrounded Peyton. And, and of course, we had faced Peyton many times before. And I always just knew Coach Woody, and um, by this time it was Coach Dorm. Um, we I wouldn't say we had his number, but it was kind of like we we had a, a stout defense, and so we 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 prepared well week in and week out, and we knew we were gonna get after him. And uh, I just remember the scheme that we had of disguising a lot of our blitzes and and who we were gonna double. Uh, we just we just knew it. We just like, guys, we, I think we don't, we don't get these jokers this year. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I still, one of the plays that still stand out to me to this day is uh, I think it was, I don't know if how many touchdowns they had, but uh, I think we we're doubling Jermaine Copeland or was it peerless price in, in the, in the slot. And so I was playing nickel and, uh, and it was between rock and I to, to, to double them. And, and we knew, what was coming um, in, in the setup. We just knew that he was going to do kind of like a, a, a slant and he was, he was going to, it was just, I mean, all day. <laughs> and so, so uh, I'm playing outside technique and back up and, and I allow him to go, go and go inside and, and uh, rock jumped the route a little bit too soon because we had a blitz on. And so, so Peyton, he pump faked it. Uh, he escaped somebody and kind of stepped up in the pocket a little bit and he just just kind of flicked it over and and I'm in a trailing position and and yeah <laughs> to this day if they ever show any highlights from from that year or with Peyton you'll see me chasing him down from behind as if I got beat and I always like ah oh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but 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 you you can also take Solis, he, you know, historically, he probably ended up being one of the top five or 10 quarterbacks in the NFL history. So yeah, yeah, you guys yeah, played yeah. him tough, that's for sure. But before we get out of here, Damien, tell folks, update them with what you're doing now. I know you're a minister in Franklin, but, but tell folks where you are and maybe if they want to reach out, how can they get in touch with you? All right, cool. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm now uh, in, in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, I head up the the family. I'm the family discipleship minister at Harpeth Christian Church. Uh, been down here now for right at five years with the with the, with the congregation. Uh, married for 21 years. Married my my college sweetheart, Christina Charlie. We just uh, celebrated 21 years back in December and. Uh, got four kids. Our daughter is at UTC running track. We're going to be taking her back uh, tomorrow, actually, because oh. her track season starts, I think, next weekend or weekend after. And then got uh, three sons after that. Jordan, he's a junior at Battleground Academy. Jonathan, he's in the eighth grade at Battleground. And then Nate is in the third grade. Um, yeah, just, you know, enjoying life here. I try to stay in shape by playing basketball at least two two days a week try to get in the gym and work out about three days um, and, and stay active. Uh, are the boys yeah, so. Are the boys starting to challenge their dad in some driveway hoops? No, I, I, I'm the, 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 you know, this, I always say this generation is different. <laughs> you know, my, my, my kids are gamers. So we're, we're having to cut their games off. I mean, all of them are, are active in, in some type of sports from Jordan. He plays, uh football and he's baseball as well uh jonathan he, he does more so track but he's gonna try his hand at football coming up so so you know sometimes it, it's it's like pulling teeth just to get them from behind their mm -hmm. games that they're playing just to kind of like hey let's go out and go go throw the football around and go go do something active not not <laughs> back in our day not back no in our day. and speaking uh, of alabama in the house Christopher Nixon just joined us. Ah, uh, Chris. Yes, indeed. And uh, Christopher Cook also just joined us. So thank you guys for mm -hmm. spending some time with Damian and Charlie. What a, what a fun conversation. I really appreciate you spending some time and sharing a little bit about your journey with us. 
Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on, Bernard, and, and really appreciate you creating this forum for us former players to be able to share our, our stories and 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 uh, and just I mean, literally the history of Vandy and and how how it shaped us and, and molded us and and even. Like I say, creating that this community for us to be able to say, like, you know, when I come back home, you know, I'm definitely planning on looking you up to see if we can grab coffee or something like that to hang out. And so, so I really appreciate you doing this. You know, I've identified, I know there's more than this, but I know just from our group here, there's 18 fellas from the Birmingham metro area that I've already made friendships with or established some communications with. So thank uh, you. Guys, we, we could we could we could get into an argument of what state delivers the best athletes to to that. that's <laughs> right that's right well, we'll we'll pick that one up another night but guys i got oh we got so many folks lined up all through we're all through the winter and each thursday night seven o'clock central i'm going to keep doing these because the little the secret is i'm the one who's having the most fun i'm getting to meet guys from all different years and just learning their their story. So you guys keep coming back and I appreciate all the support and love and comments and always let's anchor down. Anchor down, baby. Thanks, Bernard.